Hey everybody, hope you all had a good year. Mine has certainly been an endearing one. And I want to tell you guys all about it. Uh, mostly the stuff that I love, the stuff that I hate, and the stuff that I've learned. So, to start things off, I just want to say we've had a great year in terms of movies. I mean, to start off the year with great movies like Black Panther, which was already, in my opinion, the perfect standard for a uh, superhero movie, not just superhero movies, but movies in general, in terms of representing different cultures and all that good stuff. It's such a great film to like, it's such a great film when like, you know, exploring uh, different, exploring different cultures and, and the, gr and uh, having great expectations of the pos and the great possibilities of what they could be. And it's just so mind-boggling. I, I love to talk about it more in the future. And we also had other great movies like Avengers Infinity War, which is like a huge movie, still like a beyond belief movie of like adding all these characters in and like the great villain that is Thanos that had challenged them so much and is such a compelling villain. Uh, it's just, and like, you know, with and with how the film ended, to just leave like, you know, what possibly are they going to do in the future and how it affected of uh, the MCU as a whole and change our perspective of superhero movies. So I can't wait to see to wait what the future holds. And later that summer we had Ant-Man and the Wasp. And it's such a good comedy film to give us a break after the heartbreak of Infinity War. And it, I, I have never laughed so hard in that film, uh, in that film for like up, up the year to that point when I watched the film. It was such a great comic relief with Ant-Man and the Wasp and all their funny characters and in these uh, scenarios and a pretty, and like, you know, and a pretty good villain. Marvel has done pretty good this year with villain, like with Killmonger challenging our uh, perspective and like, you know, how we should, and how we should reflect upon ourselves as much as he did for uh, Black Panther, and then the and then the villain Ghost in Ant Man and the Wasp, who was just uh, who is just like you know somebody suffering under like a uh, certain illness that she couldn't help, and Marvel is definitely improving on their uh, villains as we've seen, as we're seeing, and I can't wait to see more of. And now moving beyond uh, Marvel heroes. Uh, DC has done a pretty good job because today I saw Aquaman and it is definitely the step in the right direction. I was pretty worried about the film and yeah, the script, is, the story and the script is pretty weak, but everything else just looks fantastic. The visuals, the characters are pretty likable. If this is the future that DC is uh, doing for... Is this the, if this is the future that DC is doing for us, I am so looking forward to it. But not as much as Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Possibly my favorite movie of the year. And that's mostly to do because Spider-Man is my favorite hero, comic book hero. And uh, it's just... And it's, you know, it's from a fresh perspective. Uh, seeing... And it's from a fresh perspective. Seeing Miles... Uh, this movie version of the Miles is pretty different from the comic book version one, but he's just so much, he's just so relatable. He has a passion for artistry and he also, and he's a bit of dorky and he meets with Gwen and this movie version of Gwen, I really like too. She is definitely very strong and cool and they're both really cool and the way they interact with each other is just so adorable. I can't wait to see what the future holds for them. And she, and the coolest thing about her that's very different from her comic book version one is that she wears ballet slippers and she also interprets a uh, ballet moves, more graceful. And I thought that is so cool because my mom and my sister, uh, they they were both they were both ballerina dancers and man that is that is pretty cool something you don't see quite often and the other characters too like spider-man noir voiced by nicholas cage perfect casting hope we get to see more of that and spider ham so hilarious hope you can see more of that and penny parker who was recently new in the comics got to be in this movie and they were all great ah this movie just did so many things so well. I have to talk about it in another film and another video, but this, I can't wait to see more of this. And <laughs> that end credit scene was the best end credit scene I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, 
And now moving on from superhero films, I also want to talk about other films as well. More of the films that impressed me the most this year, like um, the bio documentary of Mr. Rogers, Why, Why Won't You Be My Neighbor, which was just so wholesome and heartwarming, which is something that we definitely need in the world today that is in the world filled with cynicism and negativity and hate and so much stuff. We just need something like this to remind us that we are still human and we can still treat each other like humans. And another film that impressed me this year was A Quiet Place. And, oh my gosh, it was just so interesting. The way it was filmed, produced, how they interpreted um, sign language into this film. It just got me so invested. It was just a really great film. And I love the dynamic between uh, the director-actor uh, John Kronitsky, I think I that's how you say his name, and Emily Blunt, who was also great in Mary Poppins Returns, but more specifically the dynamic between these two actors, I hope we get to see more of later in the future. Hopefully a Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> uh, and Incredibles 2 was pretty good too. I know I was just going off from uh, superhero films, but Incredibles 2, it definitely impressed me. It made me like The Incredibles more than the first Incredibles because it was actually about the family, not just about the father. And another movie I want to talk about is Crazy Rich Asians. It was just, it was just so cool to see this a world of Shanghai, this world that I'm not quite familiar with myself. And it was just seeing a different culture, how it's interpreted, how it's modernized, how it's intercepted. It just, it was just a really good movie. And it, but it would like a to totally different perspective. And in terms of movies this year, it definitely gave opportunity to new perspective. Uh, like with Black Panther, uh, Crazy Rich Asians, and Into the, Sp and Into the Spider-Verse. Because like, you know, we've seen like, cause like Peter Park, oh, and Peter Parker, cause we, cause we've seen like Peter Parker, which is like, you know, the, the white guy who saves the day, but then we have Miles doing it. And it was nice seeing Peter Parker grow up into like his own he has his own issues he's an adult now we've seen peter parker grow up and now but now it's like we're seeing the same stories but with a new perspective a new culture and it's just so invigorating and it's so interesting which is why i think this year is like saying up like you know we see the same stories but from a new perspective a new a new perspective which makes it more interesting and so i'm so excited to see what the future holds and now moving on from film, I also want to talk about some TV series that I've looked up. Well, not really TVs, more like Netflix series. More specifically, uh, The Dragon Prince, uh, The Dragon Prince, which is a new series that was also created with some of the writers from Avatar The Last Airbender, and it definitely feels like that in this series. It's... It's just so rich in world. It's just so rich in world building. I'm just so invested to seeing what it is. And plus, we got like a whole bunch of cool characters in here. Like um, some of the bad guys' kids, I really like. The main characters are pretty likable as well. And they got this general lady who speaks in sign language and who totally kicks ass. That is so cool. Uh, and then there's this new series called Hilda, which kind of gives me like a uh, Gravity Falls kind of vibe where it's like mystery and all that stuff. So I can't wait to see more of that. But definitely my favorite show from Netflix this year would have to be She-Ra and the Princess of Power. And yes, I'm aware of like all the controversy around that, but I've seen the show for what it is and for what it is, it is pretty good. It is really good. I love these characters. I love all of them, even the bad guys. They just seem so interesting and so dignified and so trying to figure out what they want from the world. And I think a lot more people would enjoy it. And I've seen the old series, too, that's on Netflix, and it was all right for its own thing. But I think I'll talk more about that in the future. I will talk about more She-Ra in a separate uh, video. And now for some TV series that other TV series that's actually on TV, such as My Little Pony Season 8, which I really enjoyed. It was so enjoyable to see uh, Twilight and her friends take on this new task of creating a school and like bring in all these different creatures from different nations, uh, just trying to work off each other and learn about friendship and 
uh, yes, I, I want to talk about that season so much with my new character, Pen the Dragon, which I'm going to work on. And then we have Craig the Creep from Cartoon Network. It just, the show is so likable that it brought me back to my childhood of watching like Ed, Ed and Eddie and all that stuff, of being a kid and going out and having an adventure. And, uh, it's just so enjoyable. And there's also this new series called Summer Camp Island. Very weird series. Kind of reminds me of Adventure Time. But it just seems like a bit of a mystery, but also like likable characters that are trying to figure like the mystery out. So yeah, it's we've had a whole slew of great animation this year. Even Teen Titans Go! The movie was pretty good. <laughs> Who would have thought? It gave me a new perspective on Teen Titans Go! Uh, but if I can just take a moment to talk about... Uh, some of the things that I've learned that I that I've learned over the the year I want such as like the death of Stanley was definitely hard on all of us and it's gonna be hard moving forward without him but he is with us he is with us when we read a comic or when we watch a movie made by made with made by him or with him, and when we feel inspired to create, he's there with us. And I've also started reading a lot more comics this year, and I love the comics, and I would love to tell you about them in the future, which I will. And it's also inspired me to create my own comic book series. Um, I haven't, I kind of got like the rough drafts done, but I will let you guys know when I have something like, you know, you can read. <laughs> <laughs> such as my other fan fiction series that I'm working on. And I also want to get to the part that I hate about this year. When the reason recently I haven't been able to post anything is because in November my laptop crashed. So I went to this place called MacTrax and they took a look at it, and it turns out there's something wrong. They can't quite connect to the hard drive, so they think it's the cable and the hard drive. So they suggested for me to replace the hard drive with the new cable, and I have to put an OS in there, and then the data transfer. It just was a lot. A lot of money. They were going to charge me $100 for a new hard drive. They were going to charge me... $255 for a data transfer, and they were going to charge me $92 for a new cable. So yeah, it was a lot. So I purchased a new hard drive, and I wasn't going to do a data transfer because thankfully I asked around for some help, and one of my friends said that he could help out with the data transfer. So I got the deck. So I got a new hard drive, and but they said in order for a new hard drive, I need to put an OS in there, which cost me one hundred and seventy dollars. So that was two hundred and seventy dollars that I spent for this stuff. And so, and they also suggested the cable, but I said like, nah, I'll just, I'll just have them take a look at it. And so he, and so he did. We couldn't quite connect to it, so I did have to pay for the hard drive. Here's the kicker. For a cable like this we found that we could buy from Amazon for $10. $10! And they were going to charge me $92 for that same service. What was the difference? $10 for the cable itself but $80 for the service? Well, they got to eat. They got to make a job somehow. <sighs> okay, so I per... So, I so when we got the new cable, he tried to go in there, but he couldn't connect to the hard drive. So, he figured that the hard drive wasn't that good. So I had to buy a new hard drive, which cost me 50, which cost me $60. And this was for 240 gigabyte, and the one I had was 32 gigabyte. So yeah, price difference, but still, $40 difference for a hard drive that doesn't work. So, we got the hard drive, got the cable, my laptop's working, which is why I'm making this video now. And But unfortunately, when he transferred the data, it was very damaged. And he, would only, and he was only able to get so much. So some of my projects were scrapped or I'm still looking for. 
So I'm kind of starting from scratch on in terms of the projects that I've been working on, but this also provided me with a lesson. A lesson that I took away from my my Christmas, which I was very thankful to see my family, a chance to improve. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. For this new year coming up, I got a lot to improve on, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to improve myself to become more productive, to clean up my act, and to make more content for me and for you. I hope you guys like my jacket. My sister gave it to me, Mountain Dude. <laughs> And also not to trust computer places like that again. Because when I went back, because I was under, still under the 30-day warranty, and I got that new hard drive like earlier, like, um, earlier this month. So I was still under the 30-day warranty. So I went there, and I said, could I get, could I get a refund for this? And, he's, and the guy at the desk was like, oh, sorry, I can't get a refund. You could call my manager. So I called his manager, and he said, well, last time we checked, the hard drive was working fine. It was just your cable, and we suggested it, and you didn't. And you didn't take it. I'm like, okay, but I got a hard drive and a new cable and my laptop's working. Can I just get a refund for the hard drive? And you know what he said? Even I was under the 30-day warranty. He said they can't take back used products. So I spent $100 for nothing. Now I've definitely learned my lessons. And that's also a warning for you. Don't trust those computer places. They'll scam you. Take it from me. They'll scam you. Just go, just talk to your friends, try to find a friend who knows about computer stuff and ask for their advice. That's all you gotta do. It's much easier to buy the parts from a Best Buy or Amazon to get that, to get the information that you want and have your friend help you out. It's much easier that way. And also when they're done, buy them a meal because this is very frustrating work. It messed up mine and his schedule. But anyway, to take away from this and from 2018, is that there's always chance to improve. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I just wanna say thank you to all of you who watch my videos, and I hope you'll continue watching them because I have a lot of good stuff in store for you. So, until next time, this is Gary Tatum, signing off.